Witness the resurrection and rebirth of one Oswald Chesterfield Cobblepot. He had it all, then they took it from him. Now he's ready to get it all back, one caper at a time. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Batman One Bad Day Penguin issue number one and find out together, shall we? Alrighty then, so as we join the book, we're sometime in the future. A broken, dejected, and defeated penguin sits on a park bench looking across at Gotham City. It would seem that Oswald is here on this most fateful of nights looking to buy a gun with his last $20. The gun he gets is a rusted revolver piece of crap that looks like it would barely work, and Penguin has to press the guy just to get a bullet for it. What does he need the gun for? Well, to take back everything that he lost, his vast criminal empire that was stolen out from under him via betrayal. Penguin makes his way through a Gotham that looks very much like New York during its new Fear City days, and in a nice little bit of visual comedy, we see guys all around him buying much nicer guns for basically exactly what he paid for the one he has now. Not to worry, though, Penguin only needs one bullet for what he has planned next. You see, Oswald goes to look up his old head of security, a man who betrayed him in service of another power player going by the name of Umbrella Man. Penguin's pretty disappointed that all it took for this guy to betray him was a bribe of $25,000, but as the man says, he always wanted more from Oswald, wanted to be a real big-time player, a crook in his own right. But for some reason, Penguin always cut him out of the action, as Oswald goes on to explain he didn't get to be the number one gangster in Gotham City without knowing a little bit about human nature. People never change, they only become more of themselves when given the opportunity, and Penguin never cut this guy in on any of the rackets because he feared he would destroy himself, and seeing how quickly he spent that $25,000 bribe on drugs and booze and women, it looks like Penguin was absolutely right in this. Furthermore, the guy tries to take a shot at Penguin, but he manages to use that rusty gun on him first. Oswald ends up taking his gun, which means he now officially has a newer gun with three bullets in it. Hey, it's a small victory, but thank God for small victories, right? Now, if Penguin is going to take back his empire, he's going to need a crew, and the first person he decides to look up is one Lily Crusher Quan, a little person and metahuman who we discover was actually very instrumental to Penguin becoming the number one gangster in Gotham City the first time around. Unfortunately, their relationship soured once Penguin started to taste all the money and power. Suddenly, he had no time for Lily because Oswald only wanted to be surrounded by the most beautiful and influential people in Gotham City. No more time for weird little mutants. In fact, Lily says that's probably why it was so easy for the Umbrella Man to have all of Penguin's closest allies turn against him because, well, none of them really loved him. They simply put up with him so long as they could get what they wanted out of him. Penguin admits that he's always had a hard time forging relationships with people. It's been that way ever since he was very young. He was born into the lap of luxury right next to the Waynes, the Canes, and the Thomases. But unlike them, he was a twisted little freak, a strange little animal. He particularly remembers one very sad chapter of his life, a seventh birthday wherein everyone came, only for him to realize later that the children only came to his party because his mother bribed them with a hundred bucks each. It was on that day something broke inside little Oswald that was never repaired. He believed that it didn't matter if a person was good or bad. It only mattered if you could command respect, and if you couldn't get respect, well, fear's just as good. Believe it or not, after hearing this sob story, Lily actually agrees to help Penguin try and retake his empire. Half because she genuinely feels bad for him, and half because she genuinely hates what the Umbrella Man has done to Gotham. And what has he done? Well, it seems that crime under the Umbrella Man has gotten so bad. Batman has been up for days trying to quell all the gang fighting, the mass shootings, arsons, armed robbery, you name it. In fact, he's barely even fighting costumed criminals anymore. They seem to not want to come out. That's how bad things have gotten with Penguin away. And speaking of Penguin, his quest for muscle brings him to Frank. Once upon a time, this guy was Oswald's most favored henchman, and it seems that once Umbrella Man took power, he walked away. Penguin hopes that he could get Frank back on his side, but sadly, once again, he's met by a person who never actually liked him as much as he let on. Frank Frank says that while the henchmen went out there and got their bones broken by Batman, Oswald sipped champagne in the Iceberg Lounge like he was better than everyone else. Oswald says that this was a very transactionary deal and a couple broken bones from Batman in a little jail time was the price you paid to be in Penguin's outfit, which in fact Penguin says always handled Gotham City much better than the Umbrella Man did. Penguin had rules, ideals. Now it's absolute chaos on the street. The Umbrella Man doesn't care what sort of mess 
messed up sick crime you're involved in so long as you kick up a percentage to him. When Frank and his people turn on Penguin, Crusher ends up coming in and shows us exactly why she's earned such a name. It seems that she has amazing meta strength ability packed into a very small package. That's not to say Penguin and Lily don't walk away empty handed though. They find the youngest henchman, a guy named Elliot, cowering away from the others once the fighting started. Lily doesn't know why Penguin has taken such an interest in this guy, but Oswald recognizes something in him that he's always seen in himself. He's a little freak too, an outsider, someone probably bullied and sidelined by the other henchmen, but in Elliot, Oswald actually does see some raw potential. And besides, with a crew of two, he can't really get too picky choosy about who exactly is on his side. So he has security, he has a little muscle, next up he's going to need money. And when criminals like the Penguin need money, they go to the bank. No, not the regular bank that you and I go to. I'm talking about the Underworld Bank, where people wash illicit funds. Penguin practically built this place back in the day, and now he just wants a simple sum of $250,000, enough to go get him some guns. Oh, how quickly, though, people like the Euro Trash Johan who run this operation forget. Johan says that money is now officially the Umbrella Man's money, and he dare not even talk to Penguin out of fear of getting himself killed. So instead, Johan and his people are going to kill the Penguin and offer up his corpse to the Umbrella Man as a gift in hopes of earning his favor. It's here where Penguin's other amazing ability ends up kicking in. And that is his ability to build legends out of very little. He did it for himself, and now he's looking to do so with Elliot. He claims that this kid is a famous henchman, so unstable and unhinged, even the Joker didn't want him. And that if Johan doesn't cough up the money and soon, he's going to end up setting this kid loose. This plan actually ends up working pretty well. Elliot is shocked himself and even thinking, wow, this guy really did read me well because, well, essentially we are the same guy. We're both motivated by the bullies in our lives, the people who done us wrong and the people that we're trying so hard to prove wrong. Word of this heist makes it back to the Umbrella Man eventually, who we discover is named the Umbrella Man because once upon a time he actually did hold Cobblepot's umbrella. He was his attendant, his Alfred, basically. He bided his time, earned Cobblepot's trust, and when he was ready, beat the shit out of him and stole his entire empire out from under him, though now he's certainly wishing that he killed the Penguin instead of letting him go. Now Oswald's next port of call is to get some guns, but not just guns, people who can shoot them too, and this is probably the best, most creative thing John Ridley does with this story. You know how in the old Dick Tracy stories, and especially in old Batman stories, you would always have gun malls, pretty women with guns who hung out around classic supervillains, but especially around the Penguin. Well, turns out they're actually a special service provided by a woman named Frida. Her and the Penguin were pretty tight back in the way. Her and her girls would end up doing Oswald's most dirtiest jobs and ensured that no one could ever come at him. Though like everyone else in Penguin's life, she had her own reason for turning her back on him, mainly that she always felt objectified, her and her girls. They did the hardest, most dangerous work for the Penguin, but got none of the credit. Oswald has probably the funniest response ever by saying, hey, sorry, I was running a criminal empire. Next time I promise I'll have an HR department. Still, though, the Penguin does seem to be genuine in his attempt to try and mend fences, and because of that, he actually pays Frida and her girls the 250000 stolen dollars and leaves. Of course, in a grim twist, Umbrella Man and his forces already assumed that Penguin would probably try and procure the services of the gun gals, and because of that, they opt to violently wipe out all but a few of them. Penguin wistfully stares up at the Iceberg Lounge around midnight and reminisces about the good old days, saying around this time the best patrons would come in, the politicians, the captains of industry. They'd practically line up from all around just to kiss his ring. Again, Lily has to tell him that's not because they liked you, Oswald, it's because they wanted something from you. In fact, you're forever obsessed with high society and fitting in and being one of the affluent, beautiful people, but in reality, all of those captains of industry and CEOs and politicians, they weren't much better than you either. They were thugs and monsters. They just 
pretended like they weren't. When a vengeful Frida eventually joins Penguin, it seems that his fellowship is finally ready to march on the Iceberg Lounge and take out the Umbrella Man once and for all. But before they do, though, Penguin needs to have one last minor showdown with Batman. Obviously, the Dark Knight has been following Penguin every step of the way this night. He knows that he's starting a gang war and he wants to try and stop him. However, Oswald actually ends up making one hell of a speech about why Batman shouldn't. Penguin says that back in the old days, Batman always assumed himself to be the most important person in Gotham City, the one who balanced the scales between order and chaos, but as it has been made abundantly clear by the Penguin's absence, it was actually him who was doing all the heavy lifting. He ruled vice in Gotham and made sure that crime statistics never got so high. As to make the GCPD look bad, and as far as Batman and his never-ending battle against costumed criminals go, where do you think the likes of the Riddler and the Joker went to get their supplies? Well, they went to Penguin, of course, and Oswald went out of his way to make sure that they never had enough to do any real lasting damage, or that Batman could never actively stop them. And all the Penguin asks of Batman is an opportunity to put things back to the way they were. After all, Batman's at the absolute precipice right now. He could break at any moment, and well, he could use all the help he could get right now, though he is sure to swear that Penguin can have this night, but tomorrow he's coming to get him. And after the Dark Knight takes his leave, Penguin and his confederation of soldiers, people who for once actually seem to like him and are actually following him for all the proper reasons, go to war with the Umbrella Man. Even Elliot ends up growing a spine during the fight and showing exactly what he's made of. As far as the Umbrella Man himself, though, Penguin wants a one-on-one -on -one with him. It's here, though, we are very quickly reminded that despite what a criminal tactician he is, how charming he can be, the Penguin is still at the end of the day a little Danny DeVito-sized guy who the Umbrella Man is able to beat the crap out of. The only problem is, is once again, as people have been doing his entire life, the Umbrella Man underestimates the Penguin and leaves him for dead, only for him to go full feral and bite his throat out using his teeth. Wow, that Danny DeVito reference actually ended up being incredibly apt. I'm getting a big old whack of Batman Returns right here. From there, we actually end up jumping ahead five months. The Penguin retakes control of the Iceberg Lounge and once again situates himself as the number one gangster in all of Gotham City. Only now, he vows to do things the right way, honor the people who helped get him there, and never forget where he came from and how far he could fall. Hell, even Batman himself is a little worried now that Penguin has a new lease on life and people who actually love and care about him for a change. Jeez, a Penguin like that might just be unstoppable. And so that was Batman One Bad Day Penguin issue number one, and well, hey, you know what? Third time's a charm in this One Bad Day series because I positively loved this John Ridley neo-noir take on Penguin. Which is interesting to me because stylistically it doesn't actually deviate that hard from a lot of the creative ideas that I didn't like in the Riddler and Two-Face story. For one, this is a Penguin who is basically divorced from all his gimmickry and pageantry for 90% of the story. He doesn't have a top hat, he doesn't use an umbrella weapon, and yet unlike Riddler and Two-Face, when you actually strip away the gimmickry from the Penguin, he's still the Penguin and he's still actually a very interesting character who you can plug into this very kind of American gangster story and it all actually works super well. Again, this series is called One Bad Day, but you could easily call this Penguin's best night ever, the night wherein he actually had to learn to be a better person and a better class of criminal all at once. The story also reminds us at the same time someone like the Penguin couldn't have reached where they are in Gotham if they weren't very creative, very brutal, but more than anything, the sort of person that everyone around them keeps underestimating at their own risk. A villain who very well, for all those reasons and the fact that he's not insane, may actually be able to outlive all of Batman's other rogues. Overall, I would give this one a very positive 9 out of 10. This might be the best Penguin story literally in years. Hey there everyone, it's your pal Cape Jewel again, and if you're seeing my face right now, that means you watched at the end of the video, and I'll always be grateful for that. Retention helps in this crazy YouTube game, and so does becoming a patron. If you head on down to the description, you can find a link to my Patreon page. Recently just redid all the tiers, a lot of cool stuff offering up there, exclusive commentaries, exclusive polls, uh, behind the scenes concept art for Capes and Quest, that's the brand new D&D show I've started soon. Never been a better time to become a patron. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and help the channel grow and you know help me continue to deliver content like what you just saw so i want to thank you all and i will see you again next time bye bye